Hi, I'm Zor. Welcome to Inu Zor Education. We're talking about vectors and their representation. It's still part of the overview um, about vectors. So, after introduction of the concept of vectors and uh, um, certain time devoted to geometrical interpretation of the vectors as basically directed segments uh, in some space on a straight line or on a plane or in a three-dimensional space or anything. So uh, after that, um, well, I have to say that, well, the picture is worth a thousand words, of course, but mathematicians do require certain precisions, and uh, pictures are used for illustrative purposes. It's like graphs for functions. We can use the graphs to basically understand how the function behaves, but concrete analysis of the function is probably impossible without formulas, like y is equal to the square root of x. I mean, it's nice to have a graph of it, but we do need a formula and the way to calculate certain things to, to deal effectively with this. So, same thing with vectors. They need some numerical representation. And uh, here's how um, it, it's approached. Well, let's consider for simplicity uh, the movement of the point um, along the straight line. So here is the straight line. And obviously, whenever we are talking about some numerical representation of physical movement, we do need coordinates, right? So we do have zero point, and then one, two, minus one, minus two, etc. Now, here is the point somewhere, and it has certain uh, velocity moving on this particular straight line. And let's say the direction of movements is towards increasing of the coordinates. And there is a certain uh, numerical characteristic of this speed, which is a positive real number, whatever the number is. Um, now, we can always represent this particular velocity with a signed real number where the absolute value is equal to the speed itself um, and uh, the sign corresponds to a direction. If direction is towards increasing of the coordinates, then the sign would be positive and otherwise it would be negative. So, one real number would represent a velocity, not just the speed. Speed is represented by absolute value of this number, but the velocity is represented by both absolute value and a sign, which is an entire real number. So velocity of, let's say, plus 5 means that uh, in, in every unit of time, the, this particular object is moving um, five units of space towards the increasing of the coordinates. And the velocity minus five means that with the same speed of five units per unit of time, five units of length per unit of time, it moves towards decreasing of the coordinates. So one real number. And what's interesting is we are talking about the straight line where the position is also determined by one real number, whether it's on this side of the zero, on that side, positive or negative. So there is some kind of a um, correspondence between how we determine the position of the point and how we determine um, the, the, the speed of the point. Both can be represented as real numbers. Of course, they have nothing to do with each other. Position can be plus 25 and the speed can be minus 5, which means from the position 25, it moves uh, to the left on this picture with a speed of five units of time uh, of uh, length per unit of time, which means after one unit of time it will be 20, another unit of time it will be uh, 15, then 10, etc. Five per each unit of time. But in any case, what's important is the correspondence of the dimensionality. One dimensional line, and we need one. Um, re real number to represent 
position on this line and the speed on this particular line. That's very important. Now let's go to the two-dimensional case. Well, in two-dimensional case, we have two coordinates, abscissa and ordinate, and every point is defined by its two coordinates. Now, let's consider this is a ball rolling freely um, on the plane uh, along a straight line with a constant speed, and uh, geometrically you can always express it like this where this arrow represents a direction and the length of this segment represents the speed. Obviously, the, the faster it moves, the longer would be this particular um, geometrical representation of the vector of, speed, uh, of velocity. All right, all right now, um, can it be numerically represented? Absolutely. What we need is to determine direction and the magnitude of this vector, right? Because that's what def defines the vector. Direction is this one, but that's the same thing as this one. If these lines are parallel, the direction is the same, this direction, right? And the lengths I will use exactly the same. Now I will use coordinates of this point and say, okay, the vector of velocity of this particular ball, at this particular point, is a comma b. So, two real numbers which determine the end point of the vector, which is exactly the same by its magnitude and pointing to the same direction as the uh, velocity of this particular ball, this endpoint, the coordinates of this endpoint, define the vector. So, vector is defined by two real numbers. By the way, again, correspondence, two-dimensional plane, two uh, real numbers to define the position, and two real numbers to define the velocity. So, what I'm saying basically is, now, okay, let's go to a three-dimensional case just to make the whole thing complete. In the three-dimensional case, let's say it's a rocket, which is just flying towards the, I don't know, Mars by inertia, just no uh, engines working, etc. So it's a straight line in the three-dimensional space. It's exactly the same thing. I can go to the beginning of the coordinates, wherever the coordinates are. Maybe they're centered at, at, at some sun or, or some star, whatever the coordinates are. Go to the beginning of the coordinates in this uh, uh, three-dimensional coordinate space, and I will draw a vector which has the same direction as our rocket is flying, and uh, the length of the vector in some units of measurements corresponds to the um, uh, speed with, uh, of this particular rocket. And I will say that this particular um, vector represents the movement, the velocity, and its endpoint which in this case will have three coordinates, abscissa, ordinate, and applicate, um, would determine the vector. Three-dimensional case, three coordinates for position, and three numbers, three real numbers, which represent the vector of velocity in this case. The point I want to make is that there is this correspondence between the dimensionality of the of the space vectors are operate, and um, uh, and, and the number of real numbers, which are sufficient to determine the magnitude and direction of the vector, which basically define the vector. And now let's go to a completely different case. Let's say you're operating in. Um, your uh, operating, let's say, oil refinery. Now, this is a very complex um, facility, and uh, it has, let's say, 100 parameters, which basically determine how everything works. 
parameters of every particular component of this oil refinery. Let's consider it, that there is a hundred of them. Now, every one of these parameters obviously is changing as the time is changing, obviously within certain normal limits. Now, if we would like to um, uh, somehow determine this change in the parameters, well, um, in the language of mathematics, it's a 100-dimensional space, so to speak, because it takes 100 parameters to describe um, the state of the whole system. And every parameter is some real number, so we need 100 real numbers to define the state of the system. But how about vector? Well, actually, it's very, very similar to this one. Because what we can do is we can check how much each parameter is changed during the unit of time. And that's also some kind of a real number. Now, the uh, set of all these real numbers, and there are a hundred of them, of course, because there are a hundred parameters, so there are a hundred changes. Um, these real numbers would characterize the magnitude and the direction where, it, where exactly the parameters are moving at any given time. So, it's completely different, not geometrical and not even represented as a vector, a uh, geometrical vector um, uh, kind of a situation. But still, you can use an ordered set of numbers. Now, ordered because obviously the parameters are uh, meaningful. I mean, the first one is the pressure, the second one is the temperature, etc., etc. So it's ordered set of numbers which define the vector. And in this case, it's a vector of change of parameters. In all the cases I was talking about, this ordered set of numbers, the real numbers, actually describes or defines or represents, whatever you wish, a vector. And the number of these um, parameters, number of these real numbers which define the vector, correspond exactly to the dimensionality of the space this vector operates. So, right now we can forget about graphical representation of the vectors as segments with an arrow somewhere in real space, one or two or three dimensional. Uh, we can't uh, define uh, the vector in this case for a hundred dimensional oil refiner, right? But we can instead say that any set, any ordered set of real numbers represents a vector in n-dimensional uh, space. Now, if you want to keep the geometric representation of this, you can view this as coordinates in n-dimensional space uh, of the end point of the vector, where the beginning of the vector is at the origin of the coordinates. So let's say we have a three-dimensional space. And you can have this point the coordinates are a1, a2, and a3. So this would be a3. And this particular point is actually representing this vector. So, let's forget about geometric representation and let's think about the ordered, sometimes people are using angle brackets, sometimes the round brackets. In any case, let's use this particular representation of vectors. Um, now, it's more generic that's number one. Number two, it's precise because these are numbers and we know what to do with numbers. We can add them, we can multiply them, etc. We cannot say exactly the same with segments. I mean, sometimes we can, sometimes we cannot. I mean, there are certain restrictions on the geometric representation, but with numbers we can do anything we want to. 
multiply, divide, add, etc., etc. And that's what would define the characteristics and operations um, of the vectors much more precisely. Well, this ordered set of numbers is called tuple in, in mathematics. So, in this case, you might call it n tuple, which means the tuple which contains n components. Obviously, the vectors on, on the straight line uh, can be defined as one tuple. The vectors in the plane is two tuple. The vectors on, on, uh, in the space as as three tuple, and uh, the vectors in the Einsteinian Einsteinian <laughs> uh, theory of relativity, where the time also is a coordinate, is a four tuple. So that's basically it for this particular representation. Why? Now, why it's important? Because, as I was saying before, this numerical representation allows us to operate on any dimensional vectors, including the vectors which describe changes in the oil refinery, um, with numbers, which is much easier. It, it can be computerized, obviously. Uh, so that, that's the most important purpose. Um, now, um, that's basically it. So there are two representations we were talking about. The graphic representation, which is more for illustration purposes. And I will definitely use gra uh, graphical representation, the pictures, the, the geometry of the vectors, to illustrate certain properties of the vectors. Um, but at the same time, we should not forget that the precise implementation of vectors are through tuples, through ordered set of numbers, uh, and, uh, and, and that's what probably would be used to define operations on, on the vectors, etc. So I will define it using this, but I will illustrate it using geometric representation. All right, so that's it. Now you know um, another representation, the tuple representation of the, um, of the vectors, uh, and uh, well, there are much more information about vectors which I'm planning to share with you. Thanks very much. And don't forget that Unizor contains um, all these lectures, so you can re-examine them again. Um, these lectures are not really uh, supplemented with any uh, problems. These are introductory overview kind of things. Um, problems will be later. Thanks a lot and good luck.